When you're interviewing, you have to look beyond what you see right in front of you and look into what people are trying to say and then what they also aren't saying. I worked on the behavior teams for three different school districts over a six-year period. I left education to pursue financial freedom. I had a five-year recruiting career with whirlwind success. I started Maximize Your Job Search to help job seekers navigate the digital hiring process, and I specialize in ATS compliant resumes and interview strategies. There are crisis de-escalation techniques that we use during interviewing, like open-minded assessment of situations and the people in the room, identifying the underlying need and want that people may have, and utilizing a no-judgment approach or preconceived notions. Also, being completely honest with other people and ourselves, staying calm under pressure, and looking for the solution. There is a strategy I teach called join and follow to lead that basically means I'm going to meet you where you are to take you where I want you to go. Being the light in a room, like there's a dimmer switch or you've got to match energy levels and be able to turn up and down your energy with that dimmer switch based on it matching other people's energy levels. So if you're very low key and I'm high energy, I'm going to lower that dimmer switch to meet you where you are and then slowly raise it back up and bring you with me so that when you, when I walk out of the room, you feel energized and refreshed, not drugged down. And I'm going to match your rate of speech I'm going to match your volume, your enthusiasm, vocabulary, not profanity. We never want to get so comfortable. We use profanity in an interview. We're going to match, match posture and positioning. Okay. So what I mean by positioning would, if they're standing, you're standing. If they're sitting, you're sitting. How you leave the conversation will determine the overall perception about you. Do you leave people feeling energized or drained? And this is kind of what I was talking about, that dimmer switch, where if you are super high energy, you want to bring the energy in the room with you. Have you ever had a conversation with someone who kind of reminds you of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, and you walk away feeling completely drained of energy? It's exhausting, and you don't want to be that person. You don't want to walk out of the room and and the whole room feels like they were just brought down a notch. You want to leave the room energized and with enthusiasm, feeling inspired by you. That creates a partnership and makes them want to talk to you more. There are four personality types we use. This is the Merrill Wilson approach. And they're driver, analytical, expressive, and amiable. Your drivers are your fact-based intro extroverts. Sorry, <laughs> they're your fact-based extroverts. They're decisive, goal-driven, get it done kind of people. They can be perceived as arrogant or bossy. Analytical uh, people are fact-based introverts. So they're kind of your pros and cons list kind of people, ask lots of questions, can get stuck in paralysis of analysis, or they can pick apart scenarios. Uh, your expressives, those are your relationship-oriented extroverts. They're your storytellers. They're over, they overcommit themselves. They're yes people, visionaries, passion driven, can miss deadlines because of overcommitment. Me, I'm kind of a combination of an, I'm an expressive driver. Um, and so that those are my key, but I have a lot of the other traits in me as well. Amiables are relationship driven introverts. So they're calm. They can have a flat effect. They're really laid back, hard to excite. They feel deeply. They want harmony. They avoid conflict and they can be indecisive or they could make last minute decisions. And uh, you have a lot of your amiable people like my son who um, are just very even keel. Okay. So drivers, they're fact-based. They avoid emotional reasoning. They can be impatient, they avoid, so um, what you're gonna do is avoid lengthy answers to connect with them, uh, avoid any type of emotional responses that can be seen as a liability. They love to win, so 
you're going to need to talk about competitiveness, talk about being a top producer, being a key contributor, part of a winning team. Use winning language would speak most if you're interviewing with a driver. Be willing to um, talk about like how you don't stick to routines. You're willing to adapt and be flexible, whatever it takes to get the job done. Uh, they are um, kind of embrace change people. Um, so when you talk about being a disruptor, that speaks to a driver. They're usually very direct communicators. So this is where that bond acronym I teach, be open, not defensive, comes into play. You have to lower your defenses to be open with people and allow them to be open with you without you getting defensive. And very quickly, you will lose respect if you get defensive with a driver. Analytical people are fact-based. So no guessing. If you don't know the answer, they want to know that. They will respect your honesty. So leave the guesswork out of it. Have very clear answers. Don't exaggerate or embellish. Concrete answers that are logical. We want to talk about steps. We want to talk about processes. So we're using concrete answers and logical steps. Expressives. Don't interrupt expressives. Let them express joy. Let them tell the story. They want to connect with you on a story level. Catch the enthusiasm. Be patient and have fun. If you are working with or interviewing with an amiable person, they want to avoid conflict. They're going to ask you questions like, tell me about a time you resolved conflict. Tell me about a difficult coworker and how you resolved that. They are company culture driven, so they want to hire people who will be an extension of the culture they've worked really hard to, uh, uh, to create within the organization. They're morally sound and they have an excellent sense of justice. If you're interviewing with a group or a panel, you're going to connect with the hardest person to relate to first. And the reason is we all have people we are naturally drawn to, the expressives who are very open, but we may have a harder time connecting with other people that are more introverted. So in that case, we're going to try to connect with not the person we most naturally are drawn to because that connection will happen, but the person that we identify as the hardest to relate to or hardest to pull into the conversation, try throwing a couple of questions their way and connecting with them and then work your way down the group or the panel. Okay, watch news anchors. Watch how they utilize eye contact with the camera. Watch how they utilize blinking to look natural. Don't overdo it. It's not a good look. Pay attention to their speech cadence, how they smile, their voice inflections, their posture, their body language, and how they use their hands. When you're on a video interview, if you are if you talk with your hands like I do, so every once in a while you'll see mine fly up. So make sure that you're not super close to the camera so it looks like you have these giant NBA hands and it's like all in front of your face. Make sure that you're not like these great grand gestures, but just have these natural kind of hand gestures and let it be natural, but make sure that you're using, if you're gonna use your hands to do a symbol that it's in camera view. Your facial expressions, no facial Tourette's guys. And there is a training that I have um, that we will have on our program called Resting Benjamin Franklin Face. And I want you to go Google Benjamin Franklin's face. I'll tell me when you see it. And I want you to realize how he looks. Your facial expressions matter. And the reason we really care about Benjamin Franklin's face, I will show you this at the end, actually. I, you don't even have to Google it because I'm gonna show you. So we care about his face because of context and I want to explain this to you, but make sure your facial expression on a Zoom call is the only thing you have to relate to people. It has to now take the place of a firm handshake and good eye contact. So make sure that your facial expressions are indicative of how you're feeling, in a professional way, okay? I have facial Tourette's. Whatever I'm thinking shows up right here on my face. I have to be very careful of that. Easing nervous tensions. You were designed to breathe, guys. So when you hold your breath for like seven to 10 seconds at a time, then release that. You're reminding your body, 
to do what it was designed to do. You're putting your brain back in control of your bodily functions. So it was designed to breathe. So when you start to have that panic attack feeling, start holding your breath, put your brain back in control. It's this Jedi mind trick. It really will work. So take a minute. It doesn't have to be obvious. It doesn't have to be this deep breathing yoga meditation. Just hold your breath and release it. Okay. Be the solution. Companies hire solutions. They don't hire problems. So you're going to be solutions oriented. Listen for the problem past what they say into what they're needing from you. And they may not even realize what they need. 86% of the time people will buy from, a, from the first person to bring them a solution. Take the first interview and be the first person to offer a solution to their business problems. Okay. So I want to show you, let's go look at Benjamin Franklin face. Okay. So if we look at Benjamin Franklin's face, he always looks like what he is judging you on what you're spending that hundred dollars on. Don't have this look on your face on these interviews, guys. We can't look at people like this. Okay. So don't have resting Benjamin Franklin face. Don't look like you're judging people. And um, also keep in mind when other people have resting Benjamin Franklin face, then they are potentially, you don't have the context of what's going on. So sometimes they are not thinking what you think they are. Remember, like in this photo, people were not photographed with a genuine smile on their face. So the in context, he could be the happiest person in the world, but that's not how we do that. So anyway, don't have resting Benjamin Franklin face on your videos. All right. I will talk to you all later and um, I hope you have an amazing night. Bye.